your number nine, and tell me about Bull Durham, or Bull Durham, as, as everyone always says. Ron Shelton, great writer, and um, I have Kevin Costner in two of my nine films, and, and, and they both took place in the 80s. Bull Durham was cutting edge because it follows the minor leagues. His character's name is Crash Davis, and he's there to mentor this kid named Meat played by Tim Robbins is probably Tim Robbins, uh, you know, cutting film. I mean, we remember him from Shawshank Redemption, which came out a few years later. And it's really uh, a story about him mentoring him. And it's about Susan Sarandon that plays a school teacher in that small North Carolina community. And she always has a guy she sleeps with and she mentors them to kind of make them <laughs> mature. And it's Tim Robbins character, but secretly, Kevin Costner's in love with her, and it just goes to that basic love story. Yeah, it's a it's a great love triangle. It is uh, it is the love triangle that we often see in films of it of lots of different genres. But it's it's the the two guys, the one woman, and her having to choose between the two. It, it yeah, this is a great film. This came out when I was thirteen years old, I believe, and uh, it was my first exposure to Tim Robbins. Who, of course, we know now also was in Top Gun in a very small role a year or two earlier. But, but Bull Durham, yeah, it's a it's a great film. What about Bull Durham stands out to you uh, the most? The dialogue. It was great dialogue. It, there was great meters to the film. The arc was great for people in, in in the industry, and the ending. The ending. I'm not going to get away. Some people, the young your younger viewers haven't seen it yet, but it moved along. You know, Ron Shelton is really good. At, uh, at at giving get, throwing different types of twist in films and and some of the the players that were that were part of the, the 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 crew of the Durham Bulls Danny Gans who was a huge comedian here in Las Vegas was one rest in peace he died but he he's part of the uh, you know the the cast of Durham Bulls and what was the guy's name Brian that played the manager um, he was also in Raising oh. Arizona fantastic the acting was great. Yeah, I'd have to uh, look that up. I actually have it. I have IMDb up on another page. Yeah, um, terrific. Robert Wool played this. Yeah, there's a scene in the movie where you know when you go, when you go to the mound and the, to talk to the pitcher, and Robert Wool plays the 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 assistant manager, and all I'm talking about is what they're going to get the guy for his wedding. Well, let's get candlesticks. Let's get where's he registered at? It was something you never thought about. That's a Ron Shelton's way. Of taking a situation because you, know, you always wondered watching a baseball game what they talk about when when a coach goes to the mound you know and this this had a whole different angle to it. i love that scene yeah what whatever happened to robert wool's career he was huge he was huge in this movie and he was huge in their first batman movie and uh kind of dissipated a little bit from there but he's still around good run good run brian on um dragon movie guy you want to be called brian or dragon movie guy what do you he want to be by your moniker or your name uh, either or drag, you know, I like dragon movie guy, man. That that's you. That works that, for me. That's, it's... Your, that's your alter ego right now. How about Arliss on HBO at a nice run? Remember, I don't know if you watched that. He was great as a sports agent. So he, he pops up here and there. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, but good morning, Vietnam. He was great in that. Yes. He a role. So he, he still works. He still produces, but he, he kind of stole the movie. Sometimes people steal a movie and, he had some great lines and great dialogue in, in uh, Bull Durham. And Arliss was a great star vehicle for Robert Wool. You already had on your list. This is my list. It is number five. It is Bull Durham. It is Kevin Costner. It is probably the most... Kevin Costner has done three baseball movies in his career. This is probably the most, the most baseball, pure baseball film of the three, in my opinion, that Kevin Costner did. This is Kevin Costner as Crash Davis, as the minor league catcher, the guy who's still grinding away in the minor leagues, and the young phenom coming up who's not exactly the most focused, but, heck, he he, he loved his co-star enough to actually marry her in real life, so the chemistry was actually real. Between Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon, they actually got married in real life after being involved in the film. So you know the chemistry is good if it spills over into a marriage that's lasted 30-plus years. Classic baseball tale. 
classic minor league baseball tale, too, because minor league baseball stories don't get as much air as all the major league stories do for a lot of obvious reasons. But minor league baseball stories have so many wild characters, and you see a lot of those come up in this film. It is a lot of classic Hollywood tropes, a lot of baseball movie tropes, but in the hands of these filmmakers and in these actors, there's a reason. You know, you mentioned Danny Gans. Danny Gans was a big time Las Vegas performer for 25 years before his untimely death. There, there's a reason why. If you look at one of the early episodes of Family Guy, there's a reason why, the, as the as the Family Guy team, as the Griffins are driving around Las Vegas, they go, "Wow, Danny Gans, Entertainer of the Year." Because when I first moved here in 2006, there were billboards everywhere talking about Danny Gans and how he's the, eternally the entertainer of the year. Never said what year, but they just said entertainer of the year. Great strip performer was was he was you know front and center on the marquee at the Mirage. Um, all that to say that you get glimpses of that in his small supporting role when he actually was a real minor league baseball player in Bull Durham in the 1980s when they made Bull Durham, when they shot it in 86, 87, came out in 88. So, I, yeah, this is this is one that uh, Bull Durham ends up, I think, a lot higher on most people's list than it does on mine. It's uh, This this is a film that came out when, it was thir- when I was 13, so I didn't see it right away when I was junior high school. It's a little bit more adult than that. I think it's kind of more high school than junior high. Um, but this is one that is... It's an all-time classic baseball movie for a reason. It's one that people still talk about for a reason. So all of that, Bull Durham, great film, number five on my list. Uh, other thoughts on Bull Durham? Yeah, great. You're, you're 13, so that comes out. I'm 28. So that scene when he's doing her toenails and he's banging with the with the with the uh, the, the the you know the little uh, candles going on. There's erotic sex scenes in this thing. So you know, Susan Sarandon is hot. Was hot. She's still good looking for an older woman. Back then, she had that cur- that curvy, uh, you know, body. And then the what was the girl? What was the other one that did? It was a hooker, and she marries the guy that's a that's a Jesus freak that's on the team, you know. And she's banged everyone on the team. And there's a lot of sexual innuendos in this film, which made it again, you know, added a lot to what you said earlier. Just said, well, I totally agree with. Strange things happen in the minor leagues. <laughs> And, and yeah, the 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 the, uh, the the streetwalker lady marrying the religious fanatic that is that is something that uh, it's 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 so strange. It probably is based off of actual real life stories somewhere along the way. Uh, this is a film that, and you're right. It, I was probably a little bit young at the time uh, to watch this film, given given the adult nature of it. But it reflects the life of baseball players. You know, people always forget, too, when you're a, ba- a minor league baseball player, you can get called up or released or sent down at any time. So these are not people that are 35-year-olds with a wife and kids they go home to every night. This is, these are people that are transitory. They're working their way up in their career. They're mostly in their 20s. If they are like Kevin Costner's character, they are in their 30s still hanging on. But they're not... Sure. They're not settled at where they are in life, so they are kind of at that experimental period. They are in that that have fun, but also work, that live hard and play hard time of life. So yeah, it's I, I that's part of what makes all of the minor league baseball stories so interesting, so fascinating, so entertaining is all of that in this uh, in uh, in Bull Durham. This is. 13 years, 1988, so 1975, she does Rocky Horror Picture Show. Interesting to see her still playing a sexy role, still, but Aww. kind of adapting to where she is in life at that point, too. But knowing that people know it's this is throughout Susan Sarandon, this is, this is, damn it, Janet, 13 years later. Was she the one that banged Brad Pitt and Thelma Louise, or was it Gina Davis? Because she was hot in that, too. You know, yeah, and that was three years after this. I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched Thelma and Louise. Lucky Brad Pitt. My, them. yeah, my my guess is that they probably both um had a go at Brad Pitt because at, at that point Brad Pitt is the uh he's the young shirtless guy that they pick up as a as a hitchhiker. I mean Brad Pitt had been around for a couple of years, but he he wasn't really 
Brad Pitt as of yet. So um, I my guess is that they probably both had to go. But then again, that was that was such a uh, an emotional film for both those actresses, kind of escaping bad marriages. That I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember who who slept with who in uh, Thelma and Louise off the top of my head. I need to rewatch. Well, I slept with both of them in a fantasy, so. <laughs> <laughs> The real the, the real fish comes out. So I yeah I I I think most of us at one time or another uh, probably have been there right there with you uh, in in that uh, in that well, in that yeah. The Randon's got great eyes. Her eyes are so intoxicating that, and she's a great actress. So you could see, um, you know, and she she still works. You know, she's like I said, just she still looks record. good. She still looks good even now, and and her daughter was very attractive too. So. Yeah, it's it's uh and she yeah, you know, she took very good care of herself for uh all all, all of these years.